Right, we're ready to start the assembly. So the first thing we're going to do is heat up the um, whole bearing holder um, and insert one of the crank bearings at the back here. Seal facing out, of course. Right, so I finally got that um, oil seal holder in there. Um, I had to use this twatting great big lump of solid aluminium. Um, press that down in there. You're gonna have to get this thing really hot. For some reason that was a really, really tight fit. Um, so I'm not gonna put the oil seal in yet and the final clip just in case I have to take it apart for some point. Right, so what I'm gonna do is just assemble this and I'll only stop and just comment on the little parts that might be unusual or worth noting really. But other than that, I'll just time lapse it and assemble it. So what I'm doing here is just double checking the journals so I'm pour, putting these black lines on, just literally colour them in with a permanent marker. There we go like that. And then you can fit the journal and see where which where there's any very slight high spots, um, this will just erode off. There you go, so that's all on there. Now I'm going to put the rod back on and we'll just see whether it erodes it off flat or not. Right, so you take the rod off, and then you can see here, it's just a couple of, a little bit of a high spot there. Just there, look. Um, so before we polish it, I'm just going to give that an extra little bit of a sand down, just to make sure it's flat, and then we'll polish them before we actually fit the uh, fit them into the engine. So just to polish them down a bit, what I did was got um, the neck sized up journal cups put up with a solvent um, a water-based glue on the back of a piece of sandpaper fine and uh, I think it's about 240 grit or something or 400 grit actually um, and then you can just use that on there just to uh, knock down any pieces that you don't want proud not that they're big I mean don't forget we're talking pen thickness here which is down to microns and we obviously don't need microns for this kind of job um, just to make sure there is uh, smooth running as they can be and then we'll go and, then i'll go and polish them uh, in the normal way take, take them down to about 1200 grit that kind of thing we should have a nice smooth running surface then at least so now i'm going to do a quick polish on the journals i'm doing this the lazy way for those of you macgyvers out there you'll like this try not to laugh Um, with a piece of about 800 grit on it and a load of fluid and you watch that will come out there like glass in a minute when you're happy with it, it should rotate perfectly and you should be able to check that there's no axial play or lateral play so if you pull the rod backwards and forwards in this kind of direction you shouldn't be able to move really I'm very just slightly but it should also rotate easily so that's a good test that you've got it pretty much spot on. Of course, when these bolts and uh, nuts are tight, um, and obviously if you tighten, you've got to make sure they're both roughly the same tightness as well, because that can affect it. And we're looking at this kind of accuracy, right. Um, so one thing to know here, when installing these, um, I cut the chamfer uh, onto the um, journals that looks like this. I just noticed that I've cut quite a heavy chamfer on there, otherwise they grip too tight. Right, and the reason I did that is because I ended up having to do it twice. So the mistake I made, and I was aware of this beforehand, I just wasn't concentrating, which is really annoying, 
um, is when the if you look at the ground uh, pin, the actual edge of it will be something like this. In reality, this is exaggerated, like that. And when you come along with your journal, it tends it's tapered at the end. Okay, so when you actually push down, it will actually sit about here. Nice straight line. <laughs> right, there we go. So it'll sit like that, leaving a slight gap. And what I did was being aware of this, didn't first of all check that I had enough taper to match on the corner, so it pressed down flat. So I took it, the um, pin down a bit more, um, only to then find, of course, that this was now undersized. Only where, I mean, we're only talking, you know, a couple of foul, but um, it was undersized. And of course, then I wasn't happy. So you have to make sure that when you're putting in these journals, you've got the exact amount of chamfer on the side here, just to match what you've got. And don't make the mistake of thinking, oh, they're too tight or they won't work or it's not being ground enough and stuff like that. Right, moving on. Next up is the other end of the crank, the main bearing. So um, if you remember, I'm going to use an NJ enhanced bearing, those big fat rollers. Um, this is different, of course. This is um, The J's got the lip. The NU is the internal one. The NU's are better than the original because the, the original, the roller is actually fitted to the crankshaft. Uh, so every time you need to take them off, it just busts the rollers, of course. So I'm going to put this on there. And the, uh, the NJ has got the lip over the NU, which is just a straight um, shaft or ring. Um, so I'm going to put this one on there and if you notice I've put a couple of ground away sections because once you've got this on the uh, crank it's a pretty tight fit you'll be thanking you had those little marks in there because it's a right bugger to get it off in fact I've got no idea how you would get it off and then cut it off right so the first thing I'm going to do though is see whether we need to shim it or not before we put this on and so I'm going to put this down in the back here so I'm going to heat up the case it's not a particularly tight fit that one so you should be able to just warm the case slightly and it should just plop in there so i'm just going to clean that out warm the case drop him in right up next is the nu202 which is the rear camshaft bearing and if you remember and were paying attention the other day like a school kid you'll remember that this one is not as thick as the other one the original is 17 mil, this one's 15, so we need to shim it with Caesar 0.5 shims. Just in case I want to adjust it, you could get two big one millers, but um, I prefer the 0.5s just in case. I don't know, we need to adjust it at some point. So we need to go down in that hole and show you down in there again, just to remind you. There you go, I'll go down in there. Um, and then we put the big C-clip in to hold that, and then we can put the top bearing in as well. So I'll get on with that. Right, if you look carefully down there, you can see this is 2.5 shims on the back. If you look here, there's just a little tiny ridge this is where the c-clip goes it's just we need to just fill in that ridge there it's only tiny so we're going to drop one in at a time um, and see how that fits so it should take two but i don't know how tricky it'll get to be to get the c-clip in if we do that
So finally, we put on the um, oil pump drive sprocket there, or gear, followed by the uh, generator bearing, a nice SKF Explorer M1 with its brass cage or bronze cage, followed by a washer and the left-handed thread castellated nut. Right, that's it for this side. Next thing we're going to do um, in the next video is set the timing, put the flywheel on and that sort of thing. The other side. I meant to say just before we go, um, of course, you saw my previous video and then before you installed the crankshaft, um, that you checked the oil pump was working. So if we turn that, you can see the oil flow in there. However, if you look in there, you can just see there's a trickle of oil. See it over on the left hand side of the bearing, that should be spraying out there into the uh, main crankshaft, but it's not. So clearly there's a microscopic blockage down in there. Somehow I'm gonna to have to clear that out. And that's why you check. There you go. Now you can see how it should look. Oil everywhere. 